Rocket Lab's Electron rocket placed two black sky imaging satellites into orbit on November 17, on the rocket's first launch in three and a half months. The successful mission came after a period of delays due to weather, but all went according to plan, with the Love at First InSight mission taking off from the company's launch facility on New Zealand's Mahia Peninsula. Nearly an hour after liftoff, Electron successfully delivered the two Black Sky Gen 2 Earth imaging satellites to a circular 430 km orbit, growing Black Sky's constellation of real-time geospatial monitoring spacecraft, and bringing the total number of satellites deployed by Rocket Lab to 107. The mission also included a controlled ocean splashdown and recovery of Electron's first stage. For the first time, Rocket Lab stationed a helicopter in the recovery zone around 200 nautical miles offshore to track and observe the descending stage, in preparation for future aerial capture attempts. The helicopter successfully tracked the returning rocket and completed communications tests in the recovery zone, bringing Rocket Lab a step closer to catching a rocket from the sky, bringing it back to the production complex for refurbishment, and then launching it to space again. Rocket Lab has successfully recovered the first stage booster twice in its history, the only other company besides SpaceX to achieve reusability. The first successful recovery took place in November 2020, and then again in May 2021, though that latter mission resulted in the destruction of the payload. The next Electron launch, a data with Destiny, is scheduled in December and will carry another pair of Black Sky satellites. Rocket Lab announced on November 15 that it had signed a definitive agreement to acquire Planetary Systems Corporation, a Maryland-based spacecraft separation systems company. PSC is a leading provider of mechanical separation systems and satellite dispensers, with a 100% mission success heritage to date. For more than 20 years, PSC's separation systems used to separate satellites from rockets have enabled customers to lower their mission costs and streamline payload integration time from days to just minutes. Its canisterized satellite dispenser is a reliable and cost-effective housing for small satellites that protects a spacecraft during launch before deploying them in space. The acquisition will enable Rocket Lab to leverage PSC's strong brand and quality product offering of lightweight, cost-effective, and flight-proven hardware. The deal also enables PSC to make use of Rocket Lab's resources and manufacturing capability to grow their already strong commercial hardware trade. On Monday, November 15, the International Space Station Flight Control Team was notified of indications of a satellite breakup that may create sufficient debris to pose a conjunction threat to the station. This led the crew of the ISS to seal off some of the modules in which they live and work and retreat to the space capsules, the Crew Dragon Endurance and the Soyuz MS-19. The source of the debris was a Soviet-era spy satellite, Cosmos 1408. On Monday, the Russian Federation recklessly conducted a destructive satellite test of a direct ascent anti-satellite missile against one of its own satellites, creating a cloud of space debris. Cosmos 1408 is a spy satellite launched in 1982, it weighed over a ton and had ceased working many years ago. According to the U.S. State Department, the test has so far generated over 1,500 pieces of trackable orbital debris that now threaten the interests of all nations. Over the years, multiple nations including the U.S. have developed and tested anti-satellite technology. Currently, ASAT weapons that launch from Earth are suborbital rockets that home in on a target satellite and destroy it by just sitting in the way, while the satellite smashes into it at thousands of kilometers per hour. In 2007, China launched an ASAT missile at one of its own weather satellites, and India launched its first ASAT test in 2019. But Monday's test was something different, the test hit a real target in low Earth orbit, creating a cloud of debris. Experts expect this debris will continue to pose problems for satellites in orbit, as well as the astronauts living on the space station. The velocities at which this material move means it could easily puncture the walls of the station's modules. According to NASA, the space station is passing through or near the cloud every 90 minutes, but the need to shelter for only the second and third passes of the event was based on a risk assessment made by NASA's Johnson Space Center. The Russian military said it was carrying out planned activities to fortify its defense capabilities, but has denied that the test was dangerous. This test was the first of its kind for Russia, but it begs the question of whether they will conduct other similar tests. Astraspace's Rocket 3.3 successfully reached orbit on a November 20 launch, the fourth orbital launch attempt by the small launch vehicle startup. After a scrubbed launch attempt on Friday, the Rocket 3.3 vehicle, with the serial number LV-0007, lifted off from Pacific Spaceport Complex in Alaska on Saturday. The flight went as planned, with the first stage firing for about three minutes. 
The upper stage then separated and fired its single engine for approximately five and a half minutes, injecting the stage into an orbit nearly 500 kilometers high. The launch carried a test payload for the U.S. military. The payload, designed to measure environmental conditions on the vehicle in flight, intentionally did not separate from the upper stage. This was the fourth attempt by Astra to reach orbit. The previous attempt on August 28 failed when one of five first stage engines shut down within a second of liftoff, causing the rocket to slide horizontally off the pad. The company blamed the failure on a quick disconnect system for propellant lines that leaked fuel, which ignited in an enclosed space between the rocket and launch platform, severing the connection to electronics controlling the fuel pump for that engine. Two other launch attempts last year also failed to reach orbit. The second of those, in December 2020, succeeded in reaching space. However, the company's rocket ran out of fuel just a few seconds before attaining orbital velocity. Astra is planning to launch the next vehicle, LV0008, before the end of this year, and the company hopes to ramp up to a nearly daily launch cadence by 2025. A European Vega C rocket fired into space from French Guiana on November 16, carrying three French military satellites designed to locate sources of radio and radar transmissions around the world. The rocket's final stage ignited two times to position the satellites into orbit, and the three satellites were deployed from a custom-designed dispenser nearly 57 minutes after launch. The satellites known by the mission's French acronym SEERS carry sophisticated instrumentation to detect, locate, and characterize telecommunications stations and radar sites, providing information on enemy capabilities to French military commanders. The three identical SEERS satellites will fly in a triangle formation, with each spacecraft independently scanning for radio emissions coming from Earth. Each spacecraft will detect the ground-based radio signals at slightly different times, just a fraction of a second apart. Analysts can work out the origin of the transmissions by comparing the time tags showing when each satellite received the signals. French military officials say the satellites will not listen in on the contents of messages, but will supply valuable intelligence to French authorities about adversaries. Sears is the first electromagnetic intelligence mission of its kind by a European country, giving the French military a capability previously exclusive to the US, Russia, China, and India. Now, let's discuss some of the major Starship updates from the past week. After completing a record-breaking static fire test on November 12, on Monday, November 15, Starship 20 tested its aft flaps by stretching it. While minor relative to almost any other testing milestone, the test ensured that the flaps were in good condition and performing as expected. On Tuesday night, Elon Musk shared a stunning under-the-hood photograph of the Super Heavy Booster 4 prototype, showcasing all 29 Raptor engines of the booster, refitted for the third time in four months. The pic also showcases the stainless steel heat shield, which was recently installed to protect the engines during ground testing, ascent, and re-entry. Musk said the powerful methane-fueled Raptor engines combined would generate over 12 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. SpaceX has never fired up more than six Raptor engines simultaneously, thus the forthcoming Super Heavy test campaign will go down in the history books. The test is expected to take place in December. In a follow-up tweet, Musk shared details about the Raptor version 2 engines. According to him, Raptor 2 has significant improvements in every way, and it will look clean with close-out panels installed. But he added that a complete design overhaul is necessary for the engine that can make life multiplanetary, and those next-generation Raptor iterations will have a different name. On November 17, Elon Musk provided updates on the Starship rocket in a virtual conference with the board of the U.S. National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine. During the conference, Musk talked about the future of Starship development program and the progress the company has made so far. He said that Starbase's first orbital launch site would be complete as early as later this month, and SpaceX aims to conduct the first orbital flight test in January. We'll be complete with the uh, launch pad and launch tower uh, later this month, and then we'll do a bunch of tests in, in December and hopefully launch in, in January. He acknowledged that success on the first orbit attempt is not guaranteed, but assured he is confident that the rocket will achieve going to outer space in 2022. Also, according to him, we can expect commercial Starship missions carrying real payloads in 2023. During the conference, Musk mentioned that for life to become multi-planetary, we'll need around 1,000 Starship launches, and hopefully, a dozen of them will happen next year. I think if, in order for life to become multi-planetary, uh, we'll need uh, maybe a thousand ships or something like that. Hopefully a dozen launches next year. Musk said that Starship would conduct two or three uncrewed flights to Mars before a crewed flight. 
It would want to probably land two or three, I think, before sending people. Musk also spoke about Starship's lunar missions during the conference. Um, and, and I think people may know that NASA has selected uh, Starship for the um, transport of astronauts to the lunar surface. Uh, so uh, we we'll look forward to doing that for NASA. And then I think, you know, it, it really could be, it, ha it has the ability because of the, the mass transport capabilities of, of transporting enough mass and people to the moon to actually have a permanently occupied, I think, base on the moon. The virtual conference came two days after the FAA announced that the Starbase environmental assessment would complete by December 31st. This is one of the reasons why Elon Musk is so confident that a Starship orbital flight will take place as early as January. Since it began in mid-June, the entire review procedure has taken about six months. SpaceX will only be able to seek for a Starship orbital flight license after the review is completed. The FAA also posted the transcripts from the public hearings held on October 18th and 20. The FAA received more than 17,000 written comments from the public on the Starship environmental assessment, as well as 121 verbal comments. Most were supportive comments, but the Starship program also faced some opposition. The Office of Inspector General of NASA recently completed an audit and issued a report on the Artemis program which addressed the Starship multiple times since NASA intends to use it to put humans on the moon. According to the report, for the first few crewed Artemis missions, after refueling with a SpaceX Depot Starship in Earth orbit, the Starship will dock with the Orion capsule directly in lunar orbit. The HLS Starship will then transport two of the four astronauts down to the lunar surface for up to a week before returning them to Orion, which will take them back to Earth. The report states that landing humans on the surface of the Moon will occur in late 2025 or early 2026. The report estimates that the Starship orbital launch test will happen in the second quarter of the fiscal year 2022, followed by a propellant transfer test in the fourth quarter. Also an uncrewed lunar landing in the first quarter of the fiscal year 2024, and the Starship HLS launch in the first quarter of the fiscal year 2025. The U.S. Court of Federal Claims released a redacted report detailing why it ruled against Blue Origin in its lawsuit against NASA over the Human Landing System Contract Award. The court said that the company does not have standing because it did not have a substantial chance of award, and even if it did have standing it would lose on merits. This opinion is the context of the judge's ruling in Blue Origin's lawsuit earlier this month. While the proposed milestone payments are redacted, the court notes that Blue Origin's lunar lander proposal asked for more than triple the $345 million that NASA said would be available for the fiscal year 2021, meaning the company asked for about $1 billion in the first year. The court dismissed Blue Origin's allegation that NASA waived flight readiness reviews for SpaceX on the grounds that Blue Origin could not have benefited from a similar waiver because the company had not proposed any supporting spacecraft. Moving on to other Starship updates, works on the orbital launch mount is progressing, and workers began installing conduits for the water deluge system. A water deluge system is a sound suppression system designed to absorb or deflect acoustic energy generated during a rocket launch by injecting large quantities of water below the launch pad into the exhaust plume and in the area above the pad. Workers also began removing the launch tower scaffolding so that the booster catching arm could move up and down along the rails. Super Heavy Booster 5 methane and oxygen tanks were stacked together at the construction site last week, completing the 69-meter high rocket structure. Installation of electrical and hydraulic lines and 29 Raptor engines of the booster remain. With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.